Hi guys, it's Mewtwo King, and I'm finally here with the Steve Breakdown. The Steve Guide is finally here. I put in a lot of time looking into different things so that I can get all the information right, so that I can get you started as well as possible, teach you as much as possible, and if you're gonna watch this, I guarantee you'll be coming, you finish this video with a lot more information than you had prior. So definitely pay attention to all stuff I'm gonna say, because I'm gonna go over every move and everything I've learned with all the labbing I've been doing very recently. So. I'm going to start off with all of Steve's moves like usual, and I'm going to go in detail on a lot of different things. So, I'm going to start off with the jab. The jab is an overhead frame 4 attack. It is frame 4 to start, gold is 3, with a 15 frame total time. Gold has uh, 13 total time. So, um, this move combos into itself. You can do it with the jab, you can jump and do it. Jump out of shield doing it gives uh, a frame 7 attack, both forward and backward. I made another video on this if you want to check that out. But it's basically a frame 4 overhead attack. Pretty good out of shield, pretty good standard, pr pretty good while jumping. You just hold the A button to continue it, and then the F tote works. And I also showed you how, like, in another video of the zero to death, you can uh, dash forward, jab once or twice, and then, like, stuff like that, and then place the blocks. Yeah. All this stuff is in a separate video. So, you, you already know about that move. So, that's really good for comboing at low percents. Like, just, just pretty much a getaway, quick combo. Good, really good at the low damages. P pretty much went over that earlier. Now I'm going to talk about up tilt. Up tilt is like a frame 6 attack. The up tilt and up air are very similar. You can do things like this though. You can do like up air, up air, place the block under you, and then continue a combo. Um, I'm, with battlefield platforms, for example, battlefield platforms, you can actually just like land on platforms between platforms and blocks, and you can do even bigger, longer chains. And combining that with hiding under blocks on platforms and to start farming, uh, start mining, sorry, um, that could be very eff effective. But I'll go over that stuff in, in a bit when I get to that move. So, the up tilt up air, very similar. The jab F tilt, like these are just a lot of your different moves. Now, for the next tilt I'm gonna talk about, it's uh, the down tilt. This is a frame 12 attack. It lingers for a long time. You saw examples from Sakurai how it stops projectiles. Well, it also is really good on shield. If the opponent were to shield my attack, let's just pretend they're shielding. If the opponent were to shield my attack, I would still be, I would be able to jab their shield before they're able to roll away to safety. Um, and if it hits, I think this is like, I think it, uh, at zero, I'm not sure, but I think this, uh, so sometimes, it's, if depending on how they DI in the match, I think sometimes that combos it or not. But, but if they shield, it's my advantage, and if they DI in, I can, I can get, like, a forward air attack, but a lot of time they're DI away, and it's also good for, like, two framing for damage, because, like, it, it just, it just lingers right here. It, it can get predictable if you, like, only, only doing that, but, you know, it's pretty, pretty standard. Uh, Salem thinks very highly of this move, and we'll... In the future, we'll see more of the uses for it. But for now, it lingers in front, good for two framing, good on shield, safe, lasts for like over 20 frames. Not, uh, I think it's like 52 frames total time or something, don't quote me on that. I know it starts on frame 12. It's considered a good move overall. Okay, now dash attack. I think it was uh, I think a frame eight move, and it's basically, uh, you just use it to get him away from you. It's just like, uh, get away from me. And then you probably want to go back to like mining and, or whatever. Unless you want to do some edge guards, depending on the matchup. So those are some pretty standard moves. I, I, I went over the jabs and I went over all the tilts. Now I'm going to talk about some of the smash attacks. So to start with, I'll do forward smash. Uh, this is a frame 13 attack. If you're using gold, it's frame 10 though, which is three frames faster. Yes, gold is pretty much uh, faster uh, than the standard stuff. Although it has the gold has the same damage as wood. But it uh, starts one to three frames faster depending on the move. And it has about the knockback power of iron. So just get that info out of the way real quick. So uh, this F smash, to, sh to show you real quick, I tested it with all the different materials. And uh, the wood F smash kills at 89%. Oh, sorry. It, it also matters. It still moves also matters. This, I believe, kills at 89 here from that position. Uh, the down smash kills one frame, uh, one, one percent later at 90, which I'll talk about in a second. But I'll continue talking more about uh, this move now. If I was to get cobblestone, which I'm sure you know about by now, power this up, it kills at 79 percent. So that's a 10 damage difference, killing 10 damage sooner by powering up to cobblestone. If I was to upgrade again to iron or to gold, it kills at 70 percent. So wood is 89, cobblestone is 79, and wood. And, gold, and iron and gold in that situation is 70. So it's basically 9, 10 damage apart for each. It, they basically uh, it, set increases. It's about almost 2 damage more and killing 9 to 10 damage earlier from that position. Diamond, however, the diamond F smash is Steve's strongest move. 
that move kills at 54%. I'll just show you a quick example of the power of um, the, di the diamonds. Uh, spoilers on the mining, but I mean, you probably already know it by now. Uh, I'll just show you an example of the strongest move compared to the weakest move. I already showed the wood F smash, so I'm now go going to show the diamond F smash real quick. Just so you can put this in perspective how strong this move is. That, that, that's Steve's strongest move, depending on the situation. Like, if you're at the ver edge of the stage, this is his strongest move. So I just wanted to, to show that real quick. So those are the F smash. So frame 13 attack. Um, now, I do think uh, one use for it is... Uh, Offline, you could like react to the change to any movement, and then like do something like that. I reacted slow there, um, but if you're playing like online because of the input delay, something you could try to do if you want to make like a hard read, you can do this: see a change in movement, and then just release the A button. You can also do that with the down smash. So let's just talk about down smash real quick. Down smash is a frame nine move right here. Uh, see the damage here? Frame nine move, 19 damage here, but for the distance one, it has more range if on frame 12. It's a little less, you see it does like 1.5 less damage, but it kills almost the same number. And the back hit is uh, 27 frames, and it's like 40-something frames total time. It's it's not, it's it's less total time, like you can, it's less total time than F-Smash, so it has less end lag. So it's, it could be considered safer, not to mention you see this angle, it's a low angle. However, it can be kind of disappointing at times, because right here, it actually, uh, it's hard to say, because like, uh, it's hard to show this on the computer, but basically, trust me, what, if somebody's hanging on the ledge right here, and you try to down smash, it'll miss like half the characters. And when it does hit, it'll be like a, a really, really surprisingly weak hit. So originally I three crafted that. Okay, this could be really good for two framing, right? That's what I thought. But uh, the way it looks visually is not what it seems. It's actually kind of pathetic at hitting people on the ledge, which is why I recommend just standing back here. And if you want to like charge, if you want to just down smash from reaction or charge down smash, you can cover every single option except ledge jump. So if let's say you're fighting somebody and you're co you know that there's a high chance they're not going to ledge jump for whatever reason, if you're just confident that your opponent does not like to ledge jump, you could down smash um, or release the charge down smash at the edge to hit them at a low angle. This gives you edge guarding opportunities um, to t or or gives you a chance to mine or do whatever you want. So that could be really really useful. It, obviously, you know it kills characters like Little Mac immediately of the angle but it could, that that angle could be good regardless of the opponent but especially on uh, bad recovery so that's like a hard read move you can use so now the up smash this up smash is a frame eight move however i could not move out of that entire animation originally i three crafted that maybe it could be an amazing move but i didn't realize that steve couldn't move during this entire process uh all these moves kill around 90 percent like 89 at ledge 98 ledge uh i think the up smash kill is like it, it's it's around 90 90 ish percent as well so they're all around like similar power. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, all Steve's smash attacks. Um, I think if you if you think they're above you, or uh, as Sakurai said, if the, if you're camping under a platform, the up smash could be really good. But uh, so could the up airs and the up tilts. So it's really good when you're hiding under a platform. It can be good to catch a ledge jump. It can depending on the height of the character, um, it might catch tall characters. But also, I want to show you something else. L l look at the range of this. But if I just stand a little closer, if I just get a little bit closer, Steve like flicks them up in front of him. Now, it's only in front of him, because watch, if I do it the other way, it doesn't work. But if I'm if I'm spacing it right right here, the, that's that's pretty much the max range. So you could see he, he flicks them ab uh, above. So that that could be uh, interesting there. So that's pretty much uh, all of Steve's smash attacks. Frame 13 move, frame 9 or 12 distance, frame 8, all kill around 90ish. Prob probably going to be 90 with Rage. So, now with that out of the way, now I'll talk about the aerials. I don't really need to talk about the Nair because that already... And the up air. The Nair and the up air are pretty much what I already showed earlier. So now I'm going to talk about forward air, back air, and then the down air. So, the forward air is a overhead frame 8 attack, just like this. It starts, like, around there, and that's uh, frame 8. It lingers for a few frames, and then the, the middle and lower hits, like... Like, right there, see, that, that can spike, and you can kill early. I showed an example how Steve had, like, the zero deaths. But between forward airs and back airs, you can use these to just hit people. Whether it spikes or, whether, or hits them sideways, the forward air gives a good result. Either you hit him sideways, which is good, or you hit him down, which is also good. So either way, if you hit people with forward airs off stage, and keep in mind, um, you also can just, like, forward air, oh, I missed. Stand on the block, forward air, forward air, and, you know, like, well, you, you get the idea. Like, you can mix up 
because you can stand on blocks in midair. But the forward airs are really good for edge guarding and good for spiking. So I, I, I personally like using it for edge guarding or just anti airing. The back air is slower. It's frame 12. Um, kind of similar to how Hero's forward air is uh, faster and weaker than um, Hero's back air. It's the same concept with Steve. Frame 12 over overhead. The bottom part, I think it hits a little stronger. I think it's like 16 damage from full hop or something. Well, it's 14 there, but if, I think it's like... Yeah, see, it's like 16 there. They have similar power. It, it actually only kills like 5-6% later than F-Smash. So this back, the strong back air, there's not a significant difference with like your forward smash and the back air. Like, uh... See, it, hit, it hits pretty far. Forward smash is strong, of course, but it's not that significant a difference. Either way, these function basically the same. Like, you hit them off stage, they're probably dead. So it doesn't really matter if you use forward air back air, in my opinion. You just want to hit them with one or the other, and you're pretty much killing them. Now, an amazing move, the anvil. Let's show you how this move and how early this move kills. I think it's like around this. That 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 like it obliterates you. That, I think that's the same the exact percent you die. This is a, a frame I think it's like 18 or 20 attack. Um it's either frame 18 or 20. And uh it kills at like 82% on the ground without rage <laughs> on uh, FD. So that's uh that's pretty crazy. Oh, and get this. You could uh you can jump off it. But the weakness is it costs one iron. And I I will talk about iron in a minute, but basically iron is very important. In in short, iron is very important, which I'll elaborate on shortly. And it, the fact that it costs one iron, that that is a consequence you do have to pay. However, the move is still very good. It is a move you should use. Just keep in mind that it does use one iron. That is important to keep in mind, which I'll go over soon. So that's just pretty much uh, all of Steve's aerials, and with that, I'm going to uh, go start talk about the grabs next, um, and then I'm going to get into the special moves. So this is his grab. It's a frame 13 grab, which means 17 out of shield, which is pr which is pretty garbage. Uh, you can throw in a bunch of directions. Here's back throw. In my opinion, probably the worst throw because it's just a, it's just a basic throw. It's just nothing special. 12 damage. Forward throw. It's nice because of this angle. I like that move because of the angle. Up throw, this kills around like 160 or something. So I, it's a kill throw. If you're, if you're in the like 150-ish area you know, with some rage, that, that, then that can be a kill throw. Um, and the down throw, massive damage. See, look at that. Super massive damage. However, if I was to use up all my iron, uh, you'll see it's, it's going to be like a weaker, a weaker throw. And it also will send less distance. See, it's like half the damage, and uh, it sent less distance as well. So sometimes that can be useful, but most of the time you're just going to want the anvil for 10 extra damage. So down throws your combo throw, pretty much your go-to at low percents. If you, if you grab him here, obviously you're going to forward throw. I guess if you get him here, you just throw out back throw, throw him off stage, up throws for kill, killing. And that's pretty much the summary of the grab, and is as fast as you can act. Now we get into what you're probably really here for, the Steve's special moves and all the properties that go around him. So the neutral B. I made a whole video. First, I want to mention that if you haven't watched my prior videos on MVG League, um, the our YouTube, you you definitely want to check that out because I go over frame data and the items that appear and the rarity and what stages are good and bad for St Steve and why. Basically, all the nerdy stuff in detail. So if you're a competitive player at all, you should definitely check out those videos because I go over that in extreme detail. I'm not going to do that in as much detail here because I don't want to make the video way too long. But definitely check out those videos if you care more about this information at, at all. So with that said, I'm just going to talk about what the, uh, F the FD stage is. Basically, uh, you mine. You see, I, got, I already got Cobblestone and Iron. is like the third and fourth item on FD Battlefield. And then I can make Iron. But if I do that, it uses all, all my Irons. So I probably don't want to do that. So I could also do like this, get Cobblestone my third weapon. It, it makes it whatever's the strongest thing you can make. That's usually a good thing, not always. Cobblestone, as we said, you know, it hits a little harder. You might not have time in the beginning, unless you're playing like Pokemon Stadium or Live Out or something where you get like Cobblestone Iron right away. But uh, there are some ways you could uh, farm easier, uh, mine easier. You place some blocks, which is also a B move, and then hide behind it, and then start mining. Now, why are these blocks here good? It's uh, basically because. Let's, if, if you run into a block, it doesn't even break faster. And if I want to attack the block, I have to like hit it like twice with a, with a weak move, or like once with a stronger move. 
some some moves will break it easier than others. And how easy a character deals with blo these blocks, like let's say they want to stop Steve from doing this, and let's pretend the battlefield platforms. Let's just pretend the battlefield platforms here above me, even though I'm on FD. Um, so I place these blocks. I'm protected from the uh, invisible platform above me, and then I'm, I'm mining, and then they're, they're trying to stop me, and then I'm just like shielding or whatever. And look, now I already got a bunch of materials, so, which is really useful, which I'll talk about in a second. But I'm going to talk about uh, this real quick. It takes about four seconds on average to get gold, which is really useful. And it takes about seven seconds to get diamond. So I'm going to talk about each material uh, and, and also what you start with. You start with 18 dirt. And then you start and, and you also have, I think it's like eight or nine wood. And then you have uh, three iron. That's what you start the game with. However, look, now I lost all my resources. So what happens if I die? You would think you wouldn't have anything, but you always start with minimum three iron. If you have uh, less, if, if you have more than, if you have like four or five iron, then you're going to keep it all. In fact, if I just mine a bunch right here and uh, I die, and I, look, I have gold and all this, I still keep it all. But if you somehow used every single resource for some reason, you're still going to come back with, with, uh, with at least three iron. That's like the minimum requirement because the game designers wanted you to have that. Now, I could use the iron. See, look, right here, I can't make an iron weapon. I'm trying to use my table. I can't, I can't make iron yet. But if I get one piece of iron, then I'll have four pieces. Of, see, now the bar on the bottom left, I have four iron. It takes four of something to... to uh, it takes four pieces of iron to craft an iron sword. However, I don't know if I... Rec I don't think I recommend... I personally don't recommend doing that. The reason I don't recommend doing that because a lot of your moves, which spoilers like um, this move, which I haven't got to yet, and uh, this anvil, as well as your down throw doing maximum damage, moves like those. If you were to make an iron sword, you use you you sacrifice four uses of this or or any types of thing. Let's only use one iron piece each. Because of that, in my personal opinion, it might not be the best to make iron swords. You might want to just stick with wood while farming for bet for even better weapons. Salem believes that gold is really good. Depending on the matchup, like if it's a really campy matchup that they, they give you a lot of time, you know, diamond could be a good end goal. But these are just things to uh, keep in mind. And gold is the only one where it's actually faster. Other than that, they're just power increases. Uh, and then gold has the damage of wood and the knockback of iron. So... <sighs> Uh, the speed that which you mine actually varies. Um, on Lilat, it's like every 24 frames apart, but you get more iron and, and uh, you get more uh, iron and you get slightly sooner diamond. Check out my other video on Steve's stages and how he could ruin the stage list. I go over that in extreme detail. Um, on most stages, like FD, Battlefield, Small Battlefield, I think Town and uh, Smash Bros. are similar, and Yoshi's Story on the ground it's similar, but it's like slightly different. Uh, those are all similar. I think uh, it's here. It's every 14 frames apart you get a weapon with wood. Every 14 frames apart you get a weapon. Um, the f the first one's frame 15, then it's for every 14 apart. On Pokemon Stadium and Kalos, you actually I think you mine a little bit slower, but then you get better weapons immediately. Like you get cobblestone iron immediately. So it actually does vary. Like I think Steve might prefer live at the most, and then after that he probably prefer like Kalos or Pokemon Stadium in terms of mining efficiency in my opinion which again other video i go over in more detail um <sighs> dude that's like so much to talk about well the other video talks plenty about i don't i don't need to go over mining but you basically the most important thing you got to know is you got to mine to do stuff iron in my opinion is the most important and it's plentiful look, look how often i get iron look, look right here iron 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 Gold, iron, 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 and now diamond. Those are, in my opinion, the really important stuff. The other stuff, you can kind of just not care about. In my, those are the things, in my opinion, you should focus on. Redstone, don't care. Dirt and all this stuff, just just don't care about. It. Just focus on this, the stuff that I just said out loud. I think those are the things that like are really, really going to matter. You could also um, place uh, blocks everywhere. Now... Steve can jump and then place a block, or he can like double jump and then do it on the third height, but on most stages, he can't go like higher than this. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Most stages are either six or seven. Battlefield, I believe you can, Battlefield and Town City, you can go seven units high. So one higher than this. And pretty much every other stage, it's six high. And depending on the stage, 
you can go about four or five out. Like most of it's five out, and like Smashville, it's like four out from the ledge. So it's not too different. Also, you can place a if you run off and press a block right here, you can place a block, but if you're fast. Now, if you're standing on the block for too long, then it breaks. Um, also, if you the watch right here, it breaks super fast if it's off the ledge. But you can see right here and here it doesn't it doesn't break as fast. So it's basically like layer one it, uh, layer one is like he, here and here, and layer two is like he, anything from that point and onward. Basically, that area breaks fast, and the other area breaks at a normal speed. Even dirt blocks, if they're not attacked, they last for more than three seconds as long as they're not attacked and no one's standing on it. So you can see, just from like lingering attacks, doing something like this gives you plenty of time to mine the weapons you need, which is why... Oh, I actually broke it. Doing that gives you plenty of time to mine the weapons you need, and if you see they're jumping over you to attack you, you can just like shield and do whatever option out shield you want. That's why I recommend like that strategy, using the mining, but using uh, this to get behind. Now, you might be like, okay, well, why do you want to use the uh, ground version? Well, here's why. Uh, if I was to do an air version, like this... Oh, sorry, we need double jump. I don't know why I can't do this. All right, here. I just run through it. He pretty much, characters just like run through it and don't care. But if I was to do a ground block, regardless of who it is, you run to it, it doesn't even break faster. You can break blocks faster by bonking your head on them. Like, it, look, look how fast. It, it's just like, you just like obliterate them. It dep Heavier materials won't break like that, but that's why I recommend specifically the ground ones. Because the ground ones, um, you can't easily get through them. Like, it'll take time. It will take valuable time to break them. And the, the, that valuable time you can use to mine and get the weapons you want. So uh, now I'm going to talk about each of the weapons. Basically, wood and dirt, they suck. But you, you start with a lot of them. They're basically just, like, filler. They're, they're common, expendable. You mostly use them to make blocks. You can also use them to make TNT, which I'll talk about in a bit. But you can use them for like a lot of the common stuff. Mostly blocks and TNT. On the next level, right here, cobblestone. That's cobblestone. You make a sword. Oh, by the way, uh, this crafting table here, uh, it takes 45 frames to make a weapon. It, unless it's diamond, then it takes 55 frames. 10 extra frames specifically for making diamond. But everything else takes 45 frames before you can act in shield. And if you do this, R in shield, which Sakurai showed, that process leaves you drop shield for seven frames, but some random info. The next thing to talk about is uh, cobblestone is just a power increase, by the way. So it's it's straight up. Uh, I'm just going to get a little stronger. You can't use it for anything else. Iron is the real one to talk about. Iron, as I said, you, this move, the da the the down throw. Um, you can use it to make mine carts. Like these are really good moves, by the way. Down throw is really good. Down is really good. Um, and the minecart's really good, which is a move I'll talk about shortly. Because those moves are really good, that's why I don't really think making iron swords is the best, unless it's, like, plentiful. Or you can make them, but just keep in mind, if you are making them, you do lose access to, like, side beats, down airs, and, uh, and you get a worse down throw. So it's, it's your decision, but you have to keep in mind that you're making a, tr a trade-off. Unless you have tons ready, the fact that it costs four irons to make an iron sword, you have to keep that in mind if you're planning to make an iron sword. And since iron is fairly common, you might be making iron swords pretty often, so that's a common scenario you must keep in mind. Gold usually takes about four seconds to make, and gold is used uh, to make gold swords, which it does the same damage as wood, but it has the knockback of iron, and it has one to three frames faster than all the other sword attacks. Like, one frame faster for this, frame 10 instead of 13 for that. And Salem believes that gold is extremely good, and you get it uh, like one point over 1.5 times faster than diamond. Like again, four seconds instead of seven seconds on average. However, it does break early. Like uh, these, w I don't, I don't know the exact time it breaks, but it breaks. This breaks sooner than like all. See, look, it already broke. <laughs> see, that's that's the weakness. And now there's another strength of uh, iron. I go over this in my other video, but some uh, weapons dig faster than others. Wood, of course, these dig the slowest. Uh, cobblestone is like the same or one frame better. Use cobblestone is usually similar. Iron is like barely better and then gold's way better gold is like super fast at digging and then diamonds like second to gold so gold you save like three four frames off like digging compared to usual so if you ever have gold what you could do is like 
you could just use this, hit him away, or so or hit or something, just like hit him away, and then now you're now you're farming super fast, and now you already got to diamond. That's another thing you can do. But there's even something else better that I think you can do, and that's uh, spoilers. But uh, the side B. Oh, sorry. Let me redo that. Um, basically, those two side Bs. There's a slow one and there's a fast one, and this one is super strong. Look at really strong. Look at that. Twenty-three point nine damage. It's not significantly weaker than the diamond. In fact, I tested it. Remember how uh, diamond F smash at the ledge uh, killed at fifty, killed at a fifty-four percent. Well, this one kills five percent later at fifty-nine percent. So watch. Oh, I, I, I sorry, I staled it. Uh, just trust me when I say it kills at fifty-nine percent. Um, I'd, I'd rather just show the example real quick. Let's see. It's, a, it's really, really strong. And it's fast. See, look at all the damage it does. And here's the thing. It, uh, online, people, are, you can mash out. So, like, look, you can mash out of this move. And that that's without mashing. But, uh, think of it, think of it this way. Near the ledge, you have less chances. And, like, even if you mash out, like, I can just do this and, like, forward errors and edge guard you, right? But then online, you know how, uh, it's, by the time you realize that you're in the cart, by the time your brain and eyes tell you, oh, I'm in the cart, I better start mashing. Because you're not gonna, you know, expect to get hit by the cart. You, 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 it's a reaction. So that reaction, it's, it's the minecart's better online because you're not gonna realize you're in it. And so you're gonna be mashing late. So this is an extra good online tactic. So I know, I know that this goes like I know I've been going all over the place with the different uh, tools, but it's it's hard to have like an exact structure because they all like affect each other. So I'm I'm trying to do the best I can on that. So more uses for the blocks. I already showed how there's like the zero to death. If you run off and place a block right away, you could uh, do that. This is easier on some stages than others, but it's something you can just practice. If you double jump, it's just high enough to do that. You can do up air, up air, and then do, and then do that. You can go only to a certain heights. And if you're in the corner screen... Oh, and all you have to do, by the way, is you hold the B button. I'm literally just pressing jump periodically and then holding the B button. If you want to stall for some reason, you can uh, buffer jump. But uh, you can only do that a short. Watch this. If I'm on it for too long, it, you see. It, I have to see on like the third or second. It started to break really fast. If you're on it for too many frames in total, then it starts to count you as oh you're on it, and then a countdown happens and it goes at a four times faster rate of breaking. Um, but even still, you can go to like the corners up here if you wanted to. You you could stall, but it's not like broken or anything. Like you can stall, but it's not. I wouldn't call it broken stalling, because uh, see. Like, they can just, uh, any any character not named Little Mac can just be like, well, I'm just going to kill you. It, it's only Little Mac that's just going to be like, well, this sucks. <laughs> well, don't play Little Mac. But anyway, um, uh, this move is basically, he, it takes frame f uh, four and to put it under him. It always uses the worst materials. And since you start with, like, I think it's like 18 dirt and, like, 9 wood, then that's not really a big deal. Just keep in mind that, look, when I, when I uh, as, as I said before, like, I, if I use all my wood and stuff, like, See, like, I have one iron now. I'll die. I'll come back with three iron. I don't get my other resources back. I still need to come down and dig. On that note, I want to mention something else that could be useful. Um, the diamonds. Uh, so let's say I have diamond. But let's say... Oh, I finally got diamond, right? Let's, let's, let's take this... Let's, take, let's pretend this is turning. I, I got diamonds. But let's pretend I'm at 150%. Oh, no. They knocked me off stage. I'm dead. Uh, now what happens to, to my diamond sword? Well, here's what happens. It's now back to wood. So, another strategy you can use is something that I think could be good. If you think that you're going to die, if you just got really good materials like diamond, for example, or something really good, and uh, see, I got the diamond. Instead of making the sword and dying with it and it just being gone forever, if I die right now, I could just be like, okay. Ah, perfect. I still had invincibility. I used my invincibility to make a diamond sword. And now I have this sword for my whole fresh stock. That's a tactic you can use. And I think that uh, depending on the scenario, like if you're at high percent and just got diamond and you still have, you, you think it might be strategic to uh, do what I'm saying, then uh, I think that could be a really good idea. Because now you have the diamond, like the diamond's not gonna break as fast as other stuff. You're probably gonna die before the diamond breaks because this doesn't break very fast. And it, look, it, it's super strong. Every single move, it hits really hard. It's just, it's the best one you can get. So. That's why oh, another reason I think farming could be in the be uh, good in the beginning. So let's talk about strategies I think could be good. Let's pretend I'm playing on Battlefield. Uh, near the beginning, I, I want to get some weapons, right? But it's like, oh no, the opponent is going to rush me down because they want to be aggressive on Steve. So if, here's what I would do. Something like this. And then start mining. 
and they have to get through the blocks, or they have to jump over it. Jump over it means, you know, most characters don't have an air grab. They're going to have to, like, jump over the blocks and hit me. On Battlefield, I get extra protection because of the platform being above me, so I can... This is this tactic, way, way better on Battlefield. Way better under a platform than it is on FD. Um, and then, you, then, you, then, okay, I'm mining a bunch. Now I got all these free materials, and now I just shield, and then just do whatever you want out of shield. So that's one tactic you can use to mine. Another thing is like, let's say you hit him off stage, but it's like, for some reason you just don't want to use blocks to edge guard. You can use them for edge guarding. Um, another thing you can do is you, you just you just hit him away, and then it's like, well, I really re need materials right now. And I showed on other videos how you can like farm off anvils, and depending on the stage, you might get better weapons. But yeah, that's for the other video. But these are different tactics you can use. Another use for blocks, actually, besides all the edge guarding stuff, because obviously you can just wall out them in different directions, as I explained in my prior videos, is uh, from ledge, you can uh, press X and then hold B, and then you can and you can also mix up your drift. So you can I can and then like mass jump. So I can do stuff like that, right? And now I'm way up here, right? So that can be that can be really good. However, you can't drop down and do this. It does it doesn't let you do that. Uh, they they probably program that specifically on purpose, like you're on the ledge and like did that, did, see how you get the error sign. They probably did that. They probably knew what they were doing. So what one thing you could be good. Well, le your ledge roll is broken first off. <laughs> it goes super far. But you can do something like this, and now you're way up here, right? And now the cart, and you can jump out of the cart, anvil, jump out of anvil, and then land on the block. You can do stuff like that. There's so many mix-ups that you can do. Of course, they require materials. The anvil costs one iron, the minecart costs one iron, and the, all the blocks cost resources. So those mix-ups are really strong, but in order to use the best strength uh, possible, you need to be mining. Which is why, if you're fighting Steve, you want to rush him down, and if you are Steve, you want to do this, get over uh, get over here, or make a weapon, Eivor, you know, Eivor, Eivor, whatever you think is better for the moment. And then they have to approach you from a over the over over top this block or break the block or jump way over you from the platform, which is probably the worst idea of the three because then you can just like up smash or up air. Which that's like the worst idea, but some people might do it sometimes. So yeah, that's some theoretical like things of the way you would fight or use uh, Steve in those scenarios. So you can see there's like a lot you can do with the blocks, and it's just like <laughs> like oh uh, forward air, oh I missed, and it's like. Let's say I'm edge guarding and oh I missed. And you can just you can just do whatever you want. Oh, up air, up air, land, up air again. Like th there's just a lot of possibilities. Unfortunately, um or or fortunately, depending on wh who you are, if you were to if I was to do something like watch when 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 a character gets up, see it breaks the block. Also these ledge these options, if they were to like uh do stuff like this, I think like that breaks the block. Like all the ledge options, they actually just break the blocks. I think that was probably coded in on purpose, or maybe it's coincidence. But uh, yeah, you can't really trap with the blocks. But what you can trap with is TNT, which is now what I'll talk about next. TNT, you place it down. It takes uh, 24 frames to place down, and then if you press, if you hold the B button and back, or if you press wait a bit and then down B and back, you can place redstone. This switch makes it explode 12 frames later from the moment you stand on it. So. Oh, and by the way, TNT in the air, 27 frames total time instead of... It takes four, three extra total frames to place down. But now I'll talk about why this can be really good. So this move kills at this percent in you know this situation. What, what, look how strong this could be. So I'll do this, back up a bit. As long as I step on this... As long, even if I don't hit step on the switch, as long as I hit the switch, that switch registers uh, the 33.6 damage TNT, which is 1.5... Uh, times stronger than the other one I'll show you in a second. Uh, that's for a close range. Now, let's sh show the same thing. But this time, I'll space it a bit. I'll space him her out. 16.8. See, it did half the damage and less knockback. There's basically two explosions on the TNT. Or, actually, there's four different explosions, which I'll talk about now. Also, the, w the one I'm showing you right now is unblockable. So even if the, my opponent was were to block, if, even if my opponent was holding shield, this would still act as if like a Final Smash where it doesn't care about your shield. So the strongest TNT you get requires this to be hit or stepped on. As long as you're doing hitting that this pad or step, you know, stepping on this, then it registers a stronger TNT. Don't ask me why the TNT is suddenly stronger. That's just the way they coded the game. So now I'll show you some other tricks you can do. You can down smash the TNT. Salem showed me this trick. You can down smash and then hold R button to buffer air dodge. And I avoided the whole explosion. So let's say I'm thinking my opponent might ledge jump. 
and I do that, or I want to uh, react. Let's say I want to cover one of their options, whether it's ledge jump or normal ledge stand or whatever. And I down smash, and then I hold the R button, and now I have no lag. And those two chances to hit my opponent. So I'm safe. I have a chance to hit them with my down smash. I air dodge, and now I have a chance to hit them with the TNT. And then if they're still shielding or some, I can do like jabs into fair. I can try to do forward smash or down smash to break their shield. Grab if I know they're going to shield, down tilt to trap them. There's like other things you can do and just do shield break setups and traps. So there's already a lot of things you can do by just this setup. And then you wait a small period of time whenever you think they're going to act. Like, let's say I'm here. Oh, I think they're going to ledge jump. Let's say I place it down here and I'm like, I think they're going to ledge jump. Down smash and then plane A is the down smash. Plane B is the TNT. And if either of them hit, it's great for you. However, now I will show uh, this does 12 or 24 damage instead of 16 and 33. So if I'm spaced here, watch. This is going to be 12 damage because this is spaced TNT. See? But now I'm going to show it here. 24 damage TNT. And that 24 damage TNT, instead of killing at 67%, this TNT actually kills at uh, 100%. Exactly in this magical this stage. That's the exact percent they kill. I, I did some testing beforehand. So you can see 67 to 100. Uh, that's a one and a half times difference. That's 33 damage difference. So there are benefits to doing this, but your strategy might vary based on your opponent's percent. For example, if your opponent's at 70, at like 70, low 70s, it might be more convenient just to get see try for that. Because if you if you guess the le their ledge option right, it's instant KO instead of you know them surviving and maybe be able to come back with rage mechanic. But if they're at like 100 plus then you might want to favor, you know, this. Uh, if they're, like, at 100 plus already, you might want to cover options by doing this. And then, you know. So your strategy might vary based on your opponent's percent. Now, this TNT, if I was to start from fresh, from the start of the match, you can do up to three of them before I can no longer place another one. By the way, don't, in my opinion, don't worry about redstone. You don't have infinite redstone, but... You, you probably have more than enough than you ever use in a match. So, in my opinion, even without farming, like you saw, I had three TNTs, and that's without... So, in my opinion, just don't focus on redstone. I think it's the least important thing to focus on compared to everything else. That's my opinion. So, three TNTs from the start, um, which is also why, why you can get more materials. Now, the TNTs, they actually use... Um, so, what well, at the materials. First, it's using dirt. By the way, it uses 13 dirt. From the beginning of the match, you know how I said you have 18 dirt? The first TNT uses 13 dirt. And then it's like it uses dirt and then wood in that order. Because, you know, the least, least viable to most viable materials. And then if I was to dig more, you know, it, it just uses like whatever the most expendable, lowest quality materials are. That's how they code it, as Sakurai said. And, you know, fire makes it blow up sooner. But as I said, you need to step on a switch to get the maximum power of it. So, uh, this actually can hit on the ledge. Uh, so, I'll, tr I'll try to show something real quick. Um, I'll try to show you how uh, the down smash is actually kind of not that good on the ledge, uh, surprisingly. Um, let me uh, get her away. Okay. This is not as good on the ledge as you'd think. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. It, it, it does work sometimes. Dude, I tested this on Ridley, and it wasn't hitting him. But maybe it depends on the matchup. Oh, it's... Okay. This is going to be very specific. Uh, if you think they're stalling the ledge, it's matchup-based. Uh, before this video, I was actually testing this on Ridley, and his giant hands was not even getting hit. Or it, when it when he did when it did hit him, it did like three damage. But I guess it... This is very, very... It depends on their exact hurt box. So that's something you have to lab on every single matchup to know that. Interesting. Um, it's good to know. So, uh, but the TNT will easily hit the ledge. So, if the opponent's on the ledge, no matter what version I do, it doesn't matter. The TNT easily hits the ledge. So, that could be used for two framing. It could be used for people stalling. Uh, what you, well, another tactic you can use. Um, if you think there's going to be any change in their movement. So, let's... Uh, one thing you can use for TNT. You can just react to the, any, any movement change. And then go for it. So, he'll... he'll Watch, he's going to recover. Sorry, I messed, I messed up. Let me do that one more time. So let's say I'm right here. And any movement change, I press forward. That's on that. And, like, obviously, I could back up further. Like, I can do the same thing here. 
What I like to do, in my opinion, what's best is to keep farming right here. And then when you think they're getting up, just press forward. So right here, I'm farming, right? Because why stand there when you can farm? And then you press forward. The only weakness is that you, you walk slow instead of dash. But I, th I, think, I think that could be uh, a good strat. So between uh, these two and... Uh, Oh, there's actually another one. You can do that minecart, and then the explosion hits them, and then they're st stunned, and then the minecart brings them to the bottom of the stage. So there's a lot you can do with TNT, and there's even more we're going to talk about, but that's going to be for a separate video. Yes, this is just like the basics. <laughs> so to talk about the minecart, the minecart comes out on frame 18. Um, this is its power when it's like not charged. You know, I showed you how the stronger one killed it like 60% at the ledge. This uses one iron. And you can hop out of it, kind of like Bowser Jr. And it doesn't count as your jump, so watch. Um, I'll jump. Jump, and then I still have a double jump. Because that, that hop, like Bowser Jr.'s side B, did not count as my double jump. If I hit them, uh, it's based on my speed. So like, if I go slow, it does 10. If I go faster, it does 12 or whatever. It, 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 and then you know the other one, if I have gold... Now this is why gold is useful, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, gold actually makes it to go like twice as fast. So if I'm farming at the beginning, let's say it takes four seconds to get gold Okay, now here's what you can do with gold I, I really need to talk about gold because this is a uh, Salem believes that getting uh, gold weapons is really good and he's not wrong The only problem is that they break fast now that one gold when I got the one gold piece You saw how it appeared in the bottom left corner uh, That allows me to use all four of them, even though it's one gold bar, that gold bar counts as four pieces. It just it doesn't show you the, the, the fractions in, in, the, in, the, in the lower left corner. But I can use all four gold right there. And Salem believes that that's really good because not only can you farm fast, your attacks are super fast and amazing. That could be good. So regardless, gold is very valuable. But another way you can use gold, there's another thing. Um, you can power up your minecart. This frame 18 move, with, oh, by the way, this, fr this attack, if you're in it, it hits you. But if you do that, they get dragged down. And if they're at like what's like sixty percent or higher, depends on the depends on their position, the lag. Like it's kind of like a berry move, like where you have to mash out and you know online their react slower. So that could be good for edge guarding or whatever. Like if, 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 if like if I if I hit him here, I have to get I have to get some iron. If I was to hit him here, that they're probably gonna die. But imagine a faster cart. So look, I'm gonna get gold now. Now watch how good my move is. Watch how good this move is now. Look how far, look how far fast they're going. Now, imagine that, like, at the ledge. And that, that's just, that's just the, the grab part. That, by the way, that grabs shields, too. So, see, and then they're already right down there. Even if they survive and jump out, between things like this, anvils, and all, all that other stuff, they're probably pretty much screwed anyway. So, and even if you just want to hit them away, you could also just do this, and it's like, okay, now I want, I need more, I, it's like, I need more materials. So, you just throw that out. It costs only one iron, and I guess, like, a, if you, a, a bit more for the rails if you're gonna stay on the rails but then you get all these more materials so getting them regardless of if you want to edge guard them or ledge trap them or just farm for more materials you get rewarded so i do think this is a really good move you can use in the air on the ground comes out frame 18. now there's a note now to talk more about the gold actually uh here's why i think the saving gold might be good um you get this see how there's the little uh light there you get four of these you don't just get one. For one, the price of one gold, you can do four of those, and now the gold disappears. So you can either power up to get a gold sword, which is amazing. The only weakness is that you lose these four amazing side Bs and get a nerf side B, and you, of course, a sword that breaks faster, or you can just take your amazing sword. Either way, the fact is gold is really good because you have two amazing options. You can get one amazing side B, or you can just power up and get a gold weapon where it's where all your attacks are faster. Let me just show you uh, for the jab real quick. See? 13 frames total time, 3 frames starting. And instead of being a frame 13 F smash, frame 10 F smash, but has the power of iron. No matter how you look at it, it's extremely good. It's the only weak... But look, but look, now my sword's gone. And that, that's the flaw. Another thing you can do, uh, with a uh, strategy you can use with gold, uh, you can get your sword... Fight with it a bit. Let's say I attack them or whatever. But now look, I farm faster. Look, I already got diamond. Or, well, now I got diamond. That's another thing you can do. And I think all these different tactics, depending on the details of the situation, the matchup, and all that, uh, all these different tactics can be good. And now we all know how good diamond is. You know, it's just it's, it's, it's the highest tier one. 
So there's a lot of different ways you can fight and strategies you can use, just based on that alone. And so I talked about TNT, I talked a lot about the minecart, this just grabs, and then you, you can actually place a TNT here, and you can also minecart, and then the t so depending on if, 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 this, if, you're, if you're like back here, the minecart won't grab them afterwards, but if you're like close, like over there, then uh, you know the minecart will combo into the t into the TNT. Depend as long as the red trail isn't too long. These are different ways you can do it. I personally like farming here and then stepping on it. But if you want two chances to hit them on the ledge, you can just uh, do that. And there's like there's like two chances. Like let's say they avoid the explosion, but then they ledge jump or stand up or roll up, and then the minecart hits them, which is good for you, or it drags them out to the bottom right corner of the stage, which is also good for you. And that's if the explosion misses. So you basically what I'm saying is you have multiple chances to hit them. As long as you have materials and resources, you can do these setups where, you know, it's not like you're going to take damage if you're wrong. You just, you lose your setup and you still have stage control. You just lose materials, which is, again, why I mentioned my farming tip, uh, my mining tip earlier. Go under platform, place the blocks in front of you and shield. So these are all strategies that I think can be effective. And, you know, when you're above, of course, you can just stall up here. You can, you can even hold the B button to buffer, to do them as frame perfect as possible you can just hold the b button while jumping around that's what i do a lot of the time so the, that's pretty complex and then you know the up b it's like slower than frame 20 i believe and then if you just press up b it goes in a straight line and so if i up e on the ground it does this which you know that sucks but if i short if i jump and do it oh, it, go, it does that and here you can actually uh cancel on the ledge there um uh, you start going straight, and then you can choose up or down. So I'll, I'll, I'll see. I'll go up, or I can just do up right away, or down, or I can just be like, and then you can barely reach that. And then from that's not a bad position because, as I showed you before, you have you have options here. See, look, like oh, I, <laughs> there's there's a lot there's a lot you can do. So yeah, this character is really complicated and. There's a, there's a lot of depth to him, like different ways to approach different scenarios. I personally think like, you know, some of the fundamentals I taught you, like how behind block, um, get, get, get the materials or, or power out your weapons while they're trying to fight through the block. Or the fact that like, you know that they have to get through the block, so maybe they're going to attack the block, but you know they're going to attack, and now you dash attack them you just to get free damage, knowing that they have to play a certain way or to stop you because of the threat of you powering up for free. Like they're... All that stuff is really useful competitively. You know, TNT at ledge. I showed you different ways TNT can be good. Um, this move is just amazing in general, especially online, because it's you know how projectiles are better online, and also it's harder to get out because by the time you realize you're in it, you're already mashing later than you would in an offline environment, and online is going to be a thing for quite a while. So that's an extra good online option. It's just a good move in general. There's a lot of ways to like fight, and I hope these tips help you guys get started because. I know this is long, but this this took like a lot of research and experimentation stuff to, to just to get to this level. And I'm gonna have even more Steve videos in the future. And if you haven't I, I watched already, check out my other Steve videos. Not just the ones I'm gonna release in a, in the very near future, but the ones I've released even before this, because I go over a lot of different topics in deep in a lot of detail. Like the stages video I recently made, like I go over a lot of stuff in a lot of detail, like frame data, like rarity, why certain things are better than others, in my opinion, based on other reasons. So definitely make sure to check that stuff out. Well, if that said, uh, this concludes my uh, Learn Steve guide, uh, my breakdown video. I hope this uh, video helps you guys out. If you enjoy my content or uh, the MVG content in general, either or, please consider, uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell first off, hit the bell for notifications. If you wanna help out, click on the join button right next to subscribe, become a member, that'd be much appreciated. And definitely check out uh, the YouTube description below because I have a there's a lot of ways you can help support like I have merch I have a turn series that I do monthly uh, smash.gg slash FPS online I have ultimate tournaments uh, I, do, I do melee and many other games just definitely check that out uh, NordVPN uh, vidIQ there's, 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 there's a lot of stuff and I just I want to like do what I like which is like smash uh, help people out I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I'm forgetting because it's like a uh, quick, but it's a little quick. There's a one take of hours of prep. So, so uh, sorry if I forget anything, but let me know what you guys think of this video and feel free to share even more information in the comments below. And with all that said, I'll see you guys later.